This is KMJ at KMJNow.com or wherever you stream. Welcome to the Mark Capitan Show. This is attorney Mark Capitan, your host. Today's show is brought to you by the Capitan Brothers Law Firm. Hey, it's been brought to you by the Capitan Brothers Law Firm for all of 2023. If you or anybody you know has been injured in an auto accident, a truck accident, or a motorcycle accident, give us a call at 559-498-8000. Or if you've been arrested or cited for a criminal offense, call the Capitan Brothers Law Firm Monday through Friday, even on Saturdays if you want, Sundays also. 559-498-8000. Capitan Brothers, we are the Valley's Law Firm. Folks, it is the end of 2023, and maybe the most anticipated special guest I've ever had is on. You've heard me talk about her throughout this whole time. She is wonderful, she's beautiful, and she's the most hardworking person I know. My, And she's ready to cry right now. <laughs> How did you know? I was just going to say, I'm going to cry right now. <laughs> she, you, uh, Folks, the woman behind the scenes of the Mark Capitan show, Marcella Solorio Taylor, my producer. Producer. Wow, it feels different sitting here in front of you. Oh my God, you I'm are on, You are in the hot seat. Yes. You have been working so hard for the past couple of weeks because as a year-end sort of tri- tribute to all our listeners out there, you've been putting together a highlight show, a best of show of everything on the Mark Capitan show for 2023, right? And it is incredible just going back through the videos and the audio. I was sitting there with the audio listening, laughing, show after show. And I have to say, Mark, your show is great. I Uh, love uh, your show. uh, She's also my best promoter, too. So (laughs) it was funny because I I would hear you in the office and you you have headphones on. You're going through all these clips and you just start laughing and everything like that. I was like, like, I forgot how funny this segment was. Oh, it's too funny. Well, let's get right to it. So, uh, you know, and, and you've given me a surprise with a bunch of these guests and we've broken it down into segments and sections for y'all out there in KMJ and thank you KMJ listeners for a great 2023 making us number one on weekends at noon so Yay. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you all all because of Marcella. No, you. Uh, amazing. <laughs> People love you, Mark, everywhere I go. Yes, I love Mark. I listen to Mark. <laughs> well, now they're all going to love you because they're going to see you on video. Check us out on Facebook and on YouTube. You get to see the wonderful beautiful Marcella Solorio Taylor, my producer. Uh, all right. You know, I love music. Who's first up on okay. this? It's the perfect sound bite for the beginning. It's uh, Pat Travers. He was a sweetheart though. I, w- I have to say I spoke with him, you know what I Legendary him? guitar yes. player. So uh, Pat Travers, who else we have in this segment? We have uh, from Shanana, uh, Dr. Dr. L- uh, Robert Leonard. He's a forensics uh, uh, analyst and also, he was the former lead singer of Shanana and a great friend of mine, drummer for Dexie's Midnight Runners, Stoker. So we're going to get into Pat Travers first. Check all it, check out all these clips. All right, here we go. Snorting whiskey, Marcella, and drinking cocaine. He's been snorting whiskey and drinking cocaine. All right. This came, and I'm going to cut this story short because I want to talk about how it relates to you. Uh, This came from Pat Thrall, basically one day after Hangover, comes in and tells you what? Well, at the time we were, we had rehearsals at about two o'clock in the afternoon for, we were getting ready, uh, rehearsing the crash and burn up. Yeah. And uh, he didn't show up at two. And he didn't show up at three or four. So, you know, at five o'clock, big studio door gets kicked open and here he comes with his girlfriend and she's got one boob hanging out. (laughs) He's got his arm around her going like this. Isn't she beautiful? You know, I said, PT, what have you been up to? And he went, starting whiskey at 
drinking cocaine. <laughs> I said, that sounds like a song. So and I understand I in about 12 minutes, you wrote all yeah. the words to the song, which I mean, yeah. listen, it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's like, it may not be Shakespeare, but it's pretty damn yeah. good. And it became, again, an anthem, a legendary song. <laughs> One night, I, I'm, I am Teen Angel, answer me, please. I'm on my knees crying, you know, I dead girlfriend in the song Teen Angel right. answer me and I look up and not six feet away there's Jimi Hendrix already, already famous he's chair. been about two years oh, oh famous God. right oh, yeah absolutely yeah, oh uh, yeah. all of the the biggest uh, he, he was one of the biggest stars in the right, world right and He's going right on, and uh, I talked to him, and we uh, he he showed me how to. Uh, every time I have a uh, margarita with the you know the salt and uh, the lime, yeah. I think about him because he taught me how to do that that night. I didn't put know the salt on the rim. Okay. Put the salt yeah. on the rim of the margarita. No, 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 on your on your uh, oh on you your know. the palm, palm of your hand or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the, right, yeah, right, part yeah. of your hand. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, hung out with him and everything, and he just loved us. He was great. And well, you know, you know what's funny though is I just thought about it because. Because you said uh, Andy Warhol and stuff. Jimi Hendrix played with Little Richard, which was a 50s band. Andy Warhol and oh, all those guys. Them. Well, and, and they were all, uh, but I'm saying he played with them when Jimmy, uh, Little Richard was playing 50s music, basically. Um, Andy Warhol and all those guys, they favored you because that was sort of their music, huh? Well, the, the, it was their music growing up, too. I mean, uh, one time we played in Detroit, it was us, B.B. King, and Little Richard. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, amazing. But anyway, so uh, Jimi Hendrix is buying me, or we didn't have to buy it, but, you know, giving me drinks and talking about how great we are. And I thought back five months prior. Yeah. George went around and said, boys, I'm going to make <laughs> you rock and roll stars. Right. And I said, holy Hannah. He was right. He okay. was right. You're becoming a big star at the time, right? Um... You know, the interesting thing is that I toured for 15 years, so there's me in this bubble, and you you, you didn't really get to see life, you, you got to see the inside of a million hotel rooms, and eat chicken every day, <laughs> because that's what, you know, that's what they had on the riders at the, you know, the, the colleges, oh yeah, we can feed them chicken, that's cheap. <laughs> that's the cheapest um, thing. Uh, um, I'll tell you, I've been on tour with bands. You're right. Yeah, you sit chicken, chicken. and you sit backstage all day long doing nothing. Doing nothing, sitting around, looking at the chicken you don't want to eat. Now you're working side by side with the likes of Sting. How is that? Uh, pretty amazing, but he's very modest. Really? Very modest man. Uh, you know, the funny story is uh, I was at my father's house, my mother and father's house, and he actually called me yeah. at my dad's house. Yeah. And my dad answered the phone and he came out and said, Andrew, Sting's on the phone. <laughs> and, and I was just like... Did dad know who Sting was? Of course. Yeah, okay. And that's when my father realized that I was doing okay. Andrew, Sting's on the phone. Andrew, Sting's on the phone. Come here, quick. <laughs> Oh, he's, I could hear him talk all day. Love his accent. You love his accent, yes, huh? Yes, and he's so funny. He was a great guy to have in. Oh, my gosh. One of the people that we had was, you know, it's not the music of your years or my years. It was Richard Hagopian. Yes, but beautiful music. I enjoyed it. Beautiful mid Middle Eastern music. He's a accomplished oud player. An oud was a, a instrument that you probably never saw and I never saw before uh, in, until you uh, come to uh, Fresno and meet all the uh, <laughs> Armenian people that uh, love all that uh, Armenian music. So here's Richard Hagopian, world famous, by the way. Yes. And just a wonderful guy. My father had a friend that... They were from the same city in the old country. And uh, he lived in Selma, on a, not far from us. He came over, and they were talking, and my dad said, it's not enough, he's playing a couple instruments, now he wants a nude, and he says, I can't find one. His name was, we called him Uncle Harry. He was not related, right? but he was like a relative. And listen, I, I tell all my friends that too. We have uncles that aren't real uncles. Yeah, yeah. We'd go to school and they'd say, what happened? My friends, yeah. I said, well, my uncles and aunts came and they used to always say, well, how many uncles and aunts do you have? <laughs>
<laughs> the best part about it is, and the one that you laugh about the most about me, yes, is he tried to teach me how to do a Middle Eastern beat, which was like 11 ninths timing or something like that. I loved it. You were sitting there doing this. I could not catch on to anything. <laughs> well, believe me, I didn't catch on to it either. Give me a count on that. Okay, we go by doom tech. Doom tech tech, doom tech, doom. Oh, tick doom doom. Okay, go ahead. Keep doing it. I see, I can't do it. I can't do it. You can do it. Okay, okay. Keep doing it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it again. Say it again. Tick doom tick doom. Doom tick tick doom tick doom tick tick doom tick. I tried again. I tried again. I didn't get it. <laughs> he had faith in you, though. You know what? That's very nice. So, yeah, he, he was a very polite, That's gentlemanly hard. man. Yeah, he had faith in me, uh, and he shouldn't have. <laughs> You know, there were some other people that we had. You have a, a, a sort of a singer, but he more of a play, uh, you know, a, a play, um, what do they call it? An actor or a stage actor. Legendary who? Dan Pisano. Dan Pisano yes. from uh, Theater 3 and Roger Rockers and all that kind of stuff. Dan tells us a little bit about uh, his uh, trying to sing Fiddler on the Roof and what the crowd uh, uh, will accept and not accept. You have this great line where you say, Every time you went out to sing Fiddler on the Roof, I, well, you know, if I were a rich man, yeah. you would think to yourself, there goes five minutes of somebody's life. <laughs> that is exactly right. So part of it <laughs> is when you don't get that laugh, you could try to blame, but inside as an actor, you're sitting there going, oh, what did I do wrong? There's a big insecurity, right? Well, that insecurity is based on being a fat Italian <laughs> doing one of the greatest oh, on. Jewish roles of... <laughs> Of all time, I mean, I, I, and and you know, you're you're vocally challenged. There are some things every performer th thinks they can do right. better than other things. Awesome guy, yes, just a wonderful guy. Yes, such a sweetheart. Well, speaking about sweethearts, who is one of our favorite people that was musically talented? I can never say favorite. Oh, there you're right. There were so many. There were so were many, but so special. But the next one you have down oh, here. Oh, I know. Ann Thaxter. Yes. Oh, I love her. Yeah, she was a famous uh, 50s singing star, and uh, she, she was not only sweet and great and wonderful to talk to, but she did a little ditty for us. You go there, it's the huge cameras from back in the day, the hot, hot lights and all that kind of stuff. Is there rehearsals? How does that work back in those days? That was really interesting. Uh, yeah, they wanted to do, they wanted me to do a little dance number also. They asked if I could move, and I said, I think so. Uh, you know, I had done some dancing. Well, you did it very well, I'll tell you. I've watched it, so. Well, anyway, so, um, ironically, I had, I was wearing a, a strapless gown, and they thought that maybe that would be a little bit dangerous, so they put some <laughs> straps on there, they sewed them on really quick, <laughs> so that, make sure my gown stayed on, and um, we rehearsed like one or one time or two. Yeah, just something. A little did a little right. routine, and before I knew it, you know, and she said, "Okay, we're fine." Okay, <laughs> that was her time on the Ed Sullivan Show. Yes, something long before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to see the clip. She looks absolutely beautiful. She's beautiful, stunning. and check out this voice. Somebody loves me. I do. I wonder who. Right over here. So cute. Maybe it's. it is maybe it's you <laughs> that is beautiful she was so great that is awesome I, I, I don't that know that is a time gone by that is just something you just don't hear anymore that's beautiful oh that was beautiful nice. we'll be right back on the Mark Capitan show with our 2023 year end roundup <laughs> 
This is KMJ at KMJNow.com or wherever you stream. I'm getting used to that, Marcella. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I am back on with uh, Marcella Solorio Taylor. My, uh, my, she is my wonderful, beautiful, hardworking producer. Uh, uh, thanks for being on the show. Oh, you're too nice. Thank you. It's a pleasure working for you. You are so amazing. Oh my amazing. God. You are. Your husband years ago says, you know what? You need a producer. I said, I do a Saturday show. I don't need a producer. And God, he suggested you and thank oh. God he did because you've made my life so much easier. I appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you for taking a risk with me. <laughs> a risk. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, listen, we, uh, the next thing we wanted to talk about, we're doing the wrap up of 2023 in the Mark Capitan Show, and we always love to highlight our KMJ family. Yes, I love KMJ. Everybody here is amazing, and it's nice to see them, you know, away from their show, saying more about themselves and their personal lives. Yeah, and learning about them. So the first up is uh, we got Philip Teresi, uh, John Broski, Liz Kern, and uh, yeah, just wonderful people. Here we go. I was 17 years old. I had kind of sort of graduated high school early. Yeah. And so I would get up in the morning and take off and I would go to the McDonald's over there at Herndon and Clovis and I would get my Egg McMuffin and my McDonald's coffee back before they did all the fancy coffee. Yeah. And I would sit in my little Mitsubishi Mighty Max truck and enjoy my breakfast and I would call into the morning show. Oh, you were one of those guys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Love the sound of my own voice on the radio. <laughs> I want you to say this word for me. <laughs> uh, as I have been instructed, that is crayon. Okay, and how did you say it? <laughs> l l like a normal person, crayon. Crayon? Oh, that's that's the thing that... Okay, so Chris Daniels said uh, that... Uh, get him to pronounce the word crayon. Crayon. Yeah, I say crayon too, I think. Yes! Yeah, I think I agree with you that. Yeah, don't you say crayon? I say crayon. Oh, you say yeah, crayon. I wow. I do. That's why I was like, wow. I didn't know it was such a big thing. <laughs> crayon. <laughs> My fifth year, I go, yeah. if I better graduate while I'm here, because I'll never come back. Right. So I looked at all the majors, and I thought, I maybe can pass 33 units of philosophy in one year. Maybe I can do that. 33? 33 in one year. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I took 15 and 18. Wow. Per semester, all philosophy. <laughs> Jeez. And I passed them, and I got my degree. And I got out of there. You know? So, so I have I have all these great questions. Were you uh, a, a, a you know a follower of Socrates? Did you read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance? None of that applies. It was just your way of getting through college. It was just a practical decision. What can I do in one year? In one day? I thought it was going to have this great intelligent. Uh, we had intelligent discussion, yeah. but I thought it was going to be philosophy based, and, yeah. and we're going to talk about Socrates and all these things. And he just did it just to get through college. Liz Kern talks about her acting career. I got a job for Ford truck in Mexico shooting a commercial about King Kong, basically. And King yeah. Kong comes in and steals Fay Ray from right. the, the um, little cafe. And I was Fay Ray, Fay Ray shooting in Pachuca, Pachuco, Mexico with a gigantic monkey hand that was cold and they watered it down, you know, so it looks shiny. Oh. And the three caballeros come chasing after me with their Ford trucks to come save me. We're, we're going to go on YouTube. I got to find that one. That's hilarious. My favorite movies ever. Aww. You in 16 Candles, a bit part, right? It was, yeah, I didn't even talk. No, I was like a flesh tone in the background there, wearing a red dress. They shot it, um, they shot at our sister school. I went to Maine South and yeah. they shot at Maine East. And I don't remember if we heard there was a cattle call to come out and, and be an extra, but I went there with my girlfriend and we both ended up in the dance scene. And so you can see me over Anthony Michael Hall's left shoulder wearing a red <laughs> dress with like little bric-a-brac, you know, that's what they called it, the white bric-a-brac. Right. And I'm just dancing in the background and I have like two other little scenes. She's the best. She is. I can see she'd be a great actress. Oh, too funny. And who can forget our very own Ray Appleton? Oh, that's right. Ray, you know, Ray, listen, man, we can't forget Ray Appleton. But one of the things that was great about it is he talked about his family and his yes. grandson. We don't always hear a lot about that kind of stuff. So let's hear Ray talk about his grandson and the genius that that little boy is. And he's so cute. I understand cute. The, you, I his first son maybe some sort of musical savant when this is amazing he's so dramatic I took Rowan to a music store in um 
Indianapolis. I've bought him everything. I've bought him a drum set, guitars, basses, all of that. Pick something out. He's taken a real affinity to pianos, to, to keyboards. Okay. He has perfect pitch. There's a YouTube channel where his music teachers, his mother, uh, Rory, they'll play a note. He's blindfolded or with his head in the corner and he'll tell you what that is. F minor seventh. I mean... Oh, are you kidding? Oh, it's amazing. Wait a minute, he's five? Five. And he's now on the piano with the two hands crossing over. You know, Rory will yeah. call me up and go, listen to this. <laughs> and I, yeah, well, what is that? I don't recognize that. It's your grandson. No, it's not. And... He's picking up a gig on Tuesday nights to play in a, a nightclub back there. Oh. He knows how to tell a story. That guy is just the best. Yes. So we go from the voice of the valley, and you picked out a clip from what I love to refer as the face of the valley, Warren Armstrong. Yes. Here's, here's something WB, people don't know about me. me. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, if you want some, this some real dirt. Yeah. Uh, my name is Warren Bakewell Armstrong Jr. Oh. My dad is the original, and uh, my oldest son is number three. Warren Bakewell was your original Bakewell. name. Bakewell. It's an old Scottish family yeah. name. We think it means Bubba in Scottish. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but long ago, uh, yeah, my folks certainly instilled upon me a, a strong work ethic. You know, I was a knucklehead teenager, just like everybody else. I did stupid what's stuff. What's this? Okay. You know, uh, but, uh, publicly, but, what's <clears throat> the dumbest thing? And you don't have to say specifically, but I, I don't find you as a knucklehead at all. Okay. <laughs> you didn't know me when I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> hey, was that guy the most wonderful oh, guy ever? He is so charming and talented. Yeah. He just has that presence. Yeah, he has the presence. And, you know, we tried to find, you know, part of the show and in the research that you do is trying to find the person behind the person, the real story. And a lot of times it comes out with sordid pasts and, and you know, uh, emotionally charged things. He is just a really genuinely nice guy, huh? Yes, he really is. All right. Another genuinely nice guy. Alex, uh, uh, Alex on Blakian. Don't you sort of miss that old 11 o'clock news? And again, you're younger than I am, but the 11 o'clock news thing, waking up in the morning, reading the newspaper and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, I was never a guy that woke up and read the newspaper. Are you now? Well, I, I used to, um, obviously I came in this generation of this is crazy work. Yeah. Internet. Have you heard about it? So no, I, would, I, don't I would get on. The news. I would yeah. get on the computer. See, see more so yeah. yeah. There's this thing. There was this big box a computer, and you typed in but a website. Are you a and gave news, me my news Are you a news, I'm a news junkie? junkie I'm on. I. You can look at my phone. I have a ton of apps. Yeah, a ton of apps. Yeah, I believe it. He's a news junkie. Yeah, and well, believe me, all you younger, you're trying to tease the old man about uh, the fact that there's something called the internet out there. <laughs> Well, speaking about somebody from my day, oh yes, you found this next guy, and I, I, listen, he was my favorite back in the day. You weren't born at the time of the Breakfast Club on KKDJ, were you? No. You never no. heard it, huh? No, but what I heard on the air here on your show is so funny. So funny. From the wonderful Don Fisher, a.k.a. Chubb Feely. Can you pull that out uh, out of your hat? I don't know, Mark. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody, I'm on the air with Mark Capitan. <laughs> oh, that's too funny, folks. That's a voice I haven't heard in many years. I'm sorry. A voice I haven't done. <laughs> I'm sorry time. I made you do it. I know that's uh, sort of uh, cheesy of me. And you have Chubb Feely in space, and it gets quiet, and he's going to take his first step on the moon and Dean says, okay, hush everybody because it's going to be the first step on the moon. Let's hear what Chubb Feely has to say. And you say, do you remember? I don't know if I do remember. It's so funny because that's sort of what you said. You said, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> you forgot. And I started dying laughing and my friends were, what are you dying laughing about? I said, here, you got to come into the car and you got to listen to this. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. I, I, I got the notes back in the space uh, in the, you know, in the capsule. Left the notes behind. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was from the golden age of radio that I would like to say back in my time, at least. That's so funny. Yeah. I could hear him. I just want to hear more of him. Yeah. Speaking about hearing more, we're going to be right back with my producer, Marcella Solorio Taylor. And the wrap up of 2023, the best of the Mark Capitan show right after this. This is KMJ. It's KMJ at KMJnow.com or wherever you stream. Welcome back to the Mark Capitan show. We are doing the 2023 best of the Mark Capitan show put together by my lovely producer, Marcella Solorio-Taylor. Marcella, what do we have coming up next? Up next, your favorite subject, Mark. <laughs> Which is? Is uh, sports. You oh, always boy. say, I don't know about sports, but then when you're on, you act like a pro. <laughs> I act like well. a pro. That's the key. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, boxer Mark Castro and rodeo star Lefty Holman. It's a stupid question, but it's gotta hurt. I mean, it, it's the punishment... How long does it take you to recover from something like that? Um, it's kind of weird because like, you don't feel it that, like you know you're tired, but then you kind of just feel it the next couple of days. It gets worse. Yeah. Like Oh, it gets worse over time, yeah. Yeah, not yeah. worse, but like you just get tired. Like the next week you're kind of like on, you don't want to be bothered. You yeah. just want to sleep. You just like, you're just <laughs> dead from everything. Hey, uh, sounds like old age. <laughs> 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 sounds like I feel every day. <laughs> I love the Leighton Rodeo. Have you ever done the Leighton Rodeo? Uh, one time, yeah. When I was in high school, I was 17 or 18, and uh, I had just started riding bucking horses and just kind of started seeing my talent. And I went there, and I, I won it. There's two Leighton and LaGrange. They're in the same right. week. And, and I won them both, and I think I won maybe 700 or 800 bucks, and I thought I was the richest man alive. <laughs> At the, other, the time, you probably yeah, that was rich for you. Yeah. It was a day before my senior year of prom. And, oh, uh, man. So, so going in the prom with 800 bucks, I was pretty fired up. 800 bucks and a, and a hurt back? Or were you a young kid and that doesn't mean uh, nothing to you? Oh, I was feeling, I was just fine. Yeah. Great. All you guys walk with a limp, right? You got a limp yet? A little bit, yeah. You got a little bit of a limp? It's a swag walk. <laughs> it's a swag. Oh, well, that just may be your style. <laughs> that may not be any injury or anything yeah. like that. Uh, future, I mean, kids, all that kind of stuff? Uh, for sure. You know, right now I'm just loving life. You know, I'm married, uh, 24. We're working on our third house right now right now so we're just trying to trying to get ahead right now hold on hold on you're 24 and you're working on your third house yeah so that's kind of what what we do over in hawaii we uh build airbnbs and rent them out so it's right. a good um it's a good um little life after rodeo wait hopefully. a minute you're putting your money into airbnbs and in, in, in places yep yep that's yeah, uh that's my are, retirement you plan. are a smart kid <laughs> yeah you really are did you go to college uh for one semester then i was able to go on tour and rodeo so <laughs> Luckily, my wife did. So she's the money. She's the she handles the money. I'll, I'll make the money, and she can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine these guys? These young men, so talented, so funny. Yes, I can't. A smart guy. Yeah, and making so much money yeah, too. <laughs> right, and not just spending it and losing it. Investing. The guy who's not quite so young but was always into sports is our buddy from Fresno Ag, Pat Marchesi. Basically, uh, he's talking about his uh, potential sports career. But was baseball the thing that you wanted to do? I mean, was what was your aspirations as a kid? <laughs> My aspirations. Did you kid, have any? <laughs> uh, was to. to to just have fun, <laughs> you know. No, but come on. I mean, as far as dreams were concerned, did well, you, sure, I did you think you want to be a baseball star? I, I, I became a switch hitter because Mickey Mantle was my idol. Were you a switch hitter also? Yes. I mean, it's, so was that your fascination with these guys? Yeah. I mean, just, I tried to run like Mickey Mantle. I tried to swing the bat like Mickey Mantle. He was, he was my idol. We had an artificial 90 foot ski run in the back of the place. And so, really? Yeah. Wow. And so um, I was giving lessons there. There, and all of a sudden, I was giving lessons to the Hollywood movie stars. I, I gave lessons to Diana Ross. Oh, wow. Sidney Poitier, Gene Kelly, Charles Bronson. Oh, you're kidding. Yvette Lemieux and um, Donna oh, she, Mills. She told me about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, that was the one. <laughs> Schwarzenegger, I skied with him because I, I was a, um, Franco Colombo was in my class at yeah, practice yeah, school. The, the so he introduced builder, me, yeah. so I got to ski with Arnold. No kidding. And started okay. working at Fresno, well, high school, I worked right. at Fresno Ag till I got fired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> by, and, by your stepdad? By my dad, yeah. <laughs> and then- um, What did you do that got you fired? 
No, I don't, <laughs> okay, I don't want to say. say. You were a Bullard I'm, kid, so who yeah, knows? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to clean up my reputation. <laughs> I uh, love the long pause that yeah, he gives. Uh, I wish I, he would have said it. <laughs> he was such a funny guy. Oh my, Okay, next up, your second favorite subject. Which is? Food. Food. You're right. How did you know that? <laughs> After just watching me have lunch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, we were talking food. We love having the restaurant tours and all the... Uh, uh, the chefs come in. Your first one up you have here is Roy Harlan, the wonderful Roy Harlan from uh, Harlan's and Slate's and all those fine dining establishments. Back then, because some of the ingredients were just uh, not familiar with the, with the clientele. Right. And things like that. We were serving smaller portions because we wanted to you know, create the dining experience where you'd go in and have a taste of this, a taste of that, two or three things, and maybe yeah. have room for dessert instead of, you know, a one pound baked potato. <laughs> right, right. And it was a, salad. It was it was like a big juicy pound. steak, right? <laughs> so, that, you know, we got some guff because this is, uh, there's a lot of hard work and people that, uh, we're used to that big baked potato. Yeah, but yeah. they love the baked potato. <laughs> <laughs> That's what sort of exemplifies you and your son and stuff like that is it's not a job. It's a love that you've had. Yeah, yeah we did. You know, it would have been nice if I'd gone after the money side. <laughs> but it was all about uh, the artistry, you know, the... showing something new and developing. Well, okay, okay, hold on. At some point, <laughs> though, wasn't... I mean, some of the places you had were just big, brilliant, beautiful places like Slate's, it had to be at some point where you thought, hey, maybe I could really make it, especially when you started seeing the culinary world sort of become celebrity status. At some point, did you say, hey, it would be nice to actually make a bunch of money out of this? Um, I tried to, but it just it wasn't in my heart, you know. Really? I, I came from really humble stock, and everybody was good cooks, but they were Okies, you know. <laughs> we, we were having, Literally from Oklahoma, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> just a true artist to, when it comes to food. Our buddy, our yes. funniest guy ever on this show, Keith Korsgadden from Crawdaddy's, the Silver Fox. Here we go. It's one of the funnest places you'll ever go to, and, and I mean that, Keith. When we go, not only have we had fun, but I see the audience having fun, uh, the waitress uh, and the wait staff having fun. Uh, they, they're everybody's dancing. I haven't danced more. Every time I go, there's two uh, ladies that always pull me up on the dance floor and want me to dance it's just a great place to hang out well i need to get extra security to, to keep those girls away from you david <laughs> <laughs> you are mr popular that's funny i don't want to get my degree and just go work for you know some dewey cheatham and how accounting firm for the rest of my career and just oh my god the I, three I, say, by the way folks that's a three stooges reference <laughs> i love that dewey cheatham and how <laughs> uh, you know so i come back and i i work for this guy and and then i go well i can't make enough money working for my buddy don here and he's he said, hey, well, that radiator shop's for sale. Why don't you go buy that? So I'm 21 years old. I'm single. Making pretty good money, but, man, I'd go out to the Holiday Inn and, the, you know, put my angel flight suit on. And <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> just torch all my money. Oh, man, I, I can't do this. It's not a you know, good life decision. But then I'd go and I'd see these clubs where the guys were playing in bands. And I'm, wait a minute, man. This guy's in the scene. He's getting paid. Yeah. He's getting all his drinks free, and the owner's buying him a dinner. I go, and the chicks. Yeah. <laughs> and the and chicks. The I can't, chicks, I can't believe I said that. Yeah. <laughs> Great clips, Marcella. We'll be right back with the best of the Mark Capitan Show for 2023 right after this. This is KMJ. This is AMJ. Welcome back to the best of the Mark Capitan Show, the 2023 highlights put together by my favorite girl ever, <laughs> my producer, Marcella Solorio Taylor, and my friend. Thank you for being a friend. I'm going to make you cry again, aren't I? I know you are. <laughs> All right. Maybe the loveliest guest we've ever had on. Oh my God. She's just gorgeous as well. Hanayo 
Boya came from Japan. She's a professor. Uh, she was a journalist back in Japan, and she's an award-winning documentarian, and uh, she was just lovely. Here's her, her talking about uh, the difficulty of trying to broadcast and be a journalist in Japan and the political correctness that they have. I, like, freeze for five <laughs> seconds, and I said, I don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. And... I said, well, it's definitely crush. You know, <laughs> what I'm seeing in front of me is a crush. Right. You know? And then it was, you know, the Osprey was broken into pieces. Right, right. And then he said, well, you should just call it uh, landing on water. Landing on water. Yeah. <laughs> That's the polite Japanese way of saying it. I asked him, like, why? Like, who made this decision? And he said, that's the order from Tokyo. No kidding. Yeah. So. It, it's, um... There, there, and I don't remember what it's called in Japanese, but it's basically the art of saving face, basically. Right. Do you, do you understand saving, saving, um, acknowledging the incident, but putting it in a respectful term that doesn't hurt me or you, basically. Right. So I'm still not sure who gave this order, yeah. like originally, I'm not sure, but whoever who did this, yeah. it was you know, out of my journalism principle. Okay, so what did you do? Well, I, of course I couldn't follow the order, you know. Of course I couldn't. <laughs> of course, I mean, if I did, I wouldn't betray my audience, right? You mm -hmm. know, like, so. Oh my God. Yeah, so. So you just said it loud and proud. You said, hey, there's a crash over here. But no, no, <laughs> actually I said like, and then the, the Osprey was broken into pieces. <laughs> that the pieces of the aircraft was floating on the water. I can see it in front of me. That's what I said in their life. <laughs> was that your last report from uh, Okinawa? Oh, you're so, yeah, yes, it was. <laughs> oh, it really, no, I was joking. Really? Seriously, you yeah. Got, you yes. do kendo? Yes, I'm you're glad tiny. you How are you doing a kendo? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a five two, so like people are wonder like, wow, why? And then I, you always like, I always like, you know, like beat up boys, right? Right, so. right. <laughs> well, believe me, believe me, I, I did judo, and a lot of those girls could beat me up, so so no no problem at all. And this next clip, we had to tease her a little bit because she was talking about uh, her favorite food from Greece. Her boyfriend Thanos is from Greece, and she was talking about her favorite food. So we had a little fun with her. You of went course. during the summertime? Oh, yeah. so hot. You oh. know, I, I love Greek lum. Greek rum. Greek rum? Rum. Oh, uh, tsipiro? Lum, lum, lum. Lum, lum. Lum steak. Lum. Like, meh. Oh, lamb, lamb. Lamb. Oh, That's lamb. how you pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> lamb. <laughs> I love <laughs> lamb, lamb. Now forever, she says lamb, well, lamb. Oh yeah, now she remembers now. Hey, what a great we we took her and her boyfriend Thanos <gasps> out for dinner at the Elbow Room, which I love the Elbow Room by the way. Uh, what a great time we had. Oh, it was so fun. We stayed there for so many hours. Yeah, Not so hours, many hours. Yeah. yeah, no, we did. I, we actually did, and we laughed and laughed and laughed. What a great person. All right, we had some touching moments on this show. Yes, we did. Uh, so happy he was able to share his story here on your show, and you did amazing. Yeah, Bill Spears, um, yes. who found his son that had been missing for uh, over a day, nearly two days, uh, who was in a horrible accident. And this is the moment that he's describing here of finding his son that had fallen uh, or crashed over a ravine about uh, three hours away from his home. So you hop down the hill and you see what, you say what, what goes on? Uh, I hop a few times until I clear that set of bushes and then I, I see the car and then I'm like, I have the license plate and of course mm. the color, the make, and it, it froze me on my tracks and that was his car. Right. Not, not frozen because number one, you found him and also not frozen because you think this is a good thing. You're what? Expecting what? Um, I'm right there. I was still just shocked and stunned. Like, oh my gosh, I just found the car. And then I remember uh, starting to go for it again. But then that's when I became terrified. Right. Uh, was I about to find my dead son? He uh, he was exposed to the rain for this entire period. Right. So he was cold and shivering. And, you know, his, his hands were just swollen and cut up. Because apparently he tried ripping the vehicle apart himself to try to get out. He tried breaking the glass to try to get out. Mm. Um, his voice was raspy because apparently in the Caltrans maintenance yard, he saw people working. So he tried screaming to get oh. their attention. And so his vocal cords- All were, night were long, up. he's screaming for help. Yeah. Oh my gosh.
Oh, I, just a touch, just a, a unbelievable story, and it had us both in tears, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, uh, touching story. Yeah, spe- well, okay, now <laughs> let's let's uh, uh, move back to the fun that we've had because we not only had a lot of tears, but we've had a lot of laughs, laughs in the show. Yes. Yeah. Tell us about the next touching moment. <laughs> oh well, we get to learn a lot about you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> about me? Yes. And, and my and my uh, hairdressing buddy. Okay, here we go with Louis Vargas from Louis Vargas Salons. You guys have this intimate personal relationship with people like that. Uh, yeah. Well, when you think about it, how many people touch you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Well, hey, let me, are, let me go, let me if you're talking up. about if you're talking about me, no, nobody, nothing. I, it's how, been a long time, okay? How, or, or how many people touched you today? And if you think, if you think once about again, it, once again, the answer is zero. Thank you. <laughs> I decided to have my one and only perm. Maybe I had two perms back oh. in the day in high school. Yeah, Ava's laughing over there. Thank you, Ava. Yeah. Um, I don't have naturally beautiful. Uh, curly hair like you do but uh and i had the gray curlers on and then one day they decided to do what's smaller the yellow or the blue curlers the blue the, yeah <laughs> she decided to put the blue curlers on oh, i immediately jumped in the pool after my perm i was like oh my god it was horrible oh. so yeah make sure you get them out of uh, federico school not not while they're still you know fresh uh, in that school well so. it's it's funny mark because uh when i told everybody federico's yeah they thought i had transferred out into law school Mm. And everybody wanted to know where Federico oh, was. Oh, that's funny. And it was beauty school. It was beauty school. Yeah, but today, yeah. the profession is is a wonderful profession. It's just a hilarious <laughs> guy. What a great funny. He had his whole family here, too. It was awesome. Yeah, that was great. Uh, my favorite I've left for last. <gasps> yes. He happens to be my urologist. <laughs> He knows me in a very intimate way uh, as we've been talking about touching moments. My favorite, my urologist, Bill Schiff. You are know everything intimate about a person. Yeah, a lot of times, that's an interesting point. And a, a lot of times I won't, you know, people come up to me, say, hey, good to see you, Dr. Schiff. And, and I can't, and I try to introduce them to my family. I won't remember their face. So what I've, and I get Wait, yelled at When you at say you don't remember their face, no. do you remember their, their private area? <laughs> no, but I do. So ultimately what happens is they pull their pants down. They go, oh, oh, come on now, Bobby, Bill. Here's my uh, wife, Patty, my uh, son, Joey. <laughs> right. Bill, I'm trying to be serious with you. So am I. <laughs> Why? Do you guys wait until the very end to do the to do the finger? <laughs> oh. why, why don't you do it at the beginning? He he says no. he goes. I can't stand having to sit there the whole time waiting for him to do the finger wave <laughs> while we're while he's trying to have a serious discussion. No, you it's leave a, it for the very end. It's a good point because we used to do it at the beginning, but I got complaints from the neighbors because we would do it in the parking lot when the patients would God, come in because oh it's tough Lord. parking and you know we we're pretty popular. So okay. that's why we do it at the I end. I thought there was actually going to be a serious answer there. <laughs> just just a bunch of examples of the fun we had on in 2023 on the Mark Capitan show. I want to thank all the guests. We had so many clips that we could have chosen from and you just did a great job putting this together, Marcella. Oh, you did an amazing job, Mark, 2023 and it's obvious people love you. You're number 1. Yay. Uh, so my biggest cheerleader right over here. Thank you very much. Thanks to the audience. Thanks to all my guests. Thanks to my wonderful producer, Marcella Solorio Taylor. Uh, you did. I, I love it. Thank you. Uh, any resolutions for 2023? Ooh, a couple, but not sure yet. You? Not sure. Yeah. Anything you want to share? Uh, no. No, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Keeping all that stuff private. Yeah, just being more positive. You know what my resolution is? What? To, uh, to continue to improve and make this show great for all those listeners out there. How about that for sucking up? Yay! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thanks again to everybody who listens to the Mark Capitan Show on KMJ. Have a wonderful new year and good luck in 2024. We'll see you next week. <laughs>